Today we're talking about dynamic split. I get asked about it quite often and honestly it's quite a versatile multi-tool and really hard to fit everything it can do into a six to eight minute video. Um, our lovely Kenny Joya has about five videos on the topic or you know more than an hour of material. Now most questions on dynamic split are along the lines of the one you see on screen. Is this the same thing as strip silence in Pro Tools or trim silence in Logic Pro? And also loads of questions allude to its really complicated menu and all the options that are available. So the answer to that first question is yes. And the reason behind the complex menu is that just like a lot of other things in Reaper, Reaper takes a simple concept and takes it up a notch. There's a lot more you can do other than trim silence with dynamic split. So today we're going to start by talking about what dynamic split is and then through using several real life examples, cover some of its most common usages in music, sampling, sound effects, editing, podcast editing, and so on. And hopefully by the end of the video, you will know what all this stuff does and what everything means. I'll also be going Going on a couple of rants about some of the weird design choices behind this window, which has undergone some major changes in the previous few versions of Reaper. And I'll also outline some of the limitations of using dynamic split. In simple terms, dynamic split is an offline gate and transient detection module. So let's talk about the gate part first. So in plugin form, a gate analyzes the amplitude of incoming audio, and then based on a threshold and envelope and polarity settings, decides whether to let the audio signal through or put a gate in front of it and block it from going through the signal chain. Dynamic split, on the other hand, is an offline gate, meaning that it analyzes any bit of audio on your timeline and it can chop it to different bits based on amplitude. And from there, we can perform some mass operations to large audio files to speed up our editing. Alternatively, dynamic split can also detect transients, that is sudden burst of amplitude in a waveform. So once dynamic split does its analysis, then there are five things that we can do to our audio. So onto our first example, strip silence or trim silence. So let me just set the scene for you. Let's say I have an hour long voice recording, could be a podcast or an audiobook or whatever. And throughout the recording are some silence bits where the speaker stopped to drink water or take a rest or whatever it is. And we want to automatically take all those silent bits out of our recording. Well, in this case, if we set our dynamic split to work like a gate and then tell it to delete all the audio bits from the times that the gate is closed, what we're left with is essentially all the non-silent parts. So, I mean, I can just look at this waveform and I can easily see where all the silent bits are, right? But in reality, there's no such thing as silence. We can only define silence in relative terms as a lack of any audio that we perceive to be loud. But any environment we're in short of the vacuum of space or an anechoic chamber has a sound to it, has a room tone to it, as well as every microphone preamp has a level of noise in it that is over minus infinity. But as far as Reaper is concerned, minus infinity is the only form of silence there is, what we call digital void. So the first thing we gotta do if we want to trim silence out of a recording is essentially to tell Reaper what we mean by silence. Now, one of the confusing things about this dialog box, it's not super logically laid out because I usually find that I don't set things up from top to bottom. I find myself constantly jumping between these parameters and from box to box. So let's jump into Reaper and set up our dynamic split window. So instead of going through the menu from top to bottom, I'm going to go through it in a way that seems logical to me and hopefully to you as well. So there are five types of actions that dynamic split can perform. And for the sake of duration today, we're going to focus on the top two. I will do another tutorial for the bottom three. So the first two actions are split selected items and split selected and grouped items. Well, the action we want to perform is we want to split the selected item. So in this use case, we're not really interested in the transient detection settings because this is speech and transients in speech can occur at the beginning or at the end. Like for example, if I say a word like word, the transient actually falls at the end. And if I say a word like tough, well, the transient for that is the T and that's at the beginning of your word. So we're not really interested in transients. We are interested in the gate part of this. And so looking at the options down here, the first option is set new item time based to beats. Well, this is for music stuff, so we don't need to do that. And the next one is set snap offset to peak value. And I'll show you what this does in the next example. For this one, what we want to do is we want to remove the silent areas and it says require splitting on gate close. So this option will actually be grayed out until you tick this box. And once you do that, you'll see some green vertical lines like this. These are the areas where the gate is going to open or close. And these gray areas are what will be cut out of our recording once we hit split. 
And as a bonus, as of Reaper 623, if you have ripple editing enabled, once you hit split, all these fragments of audio will come together, which makes your job a lot easier. However, let's not do anything rash yet, because as you can see, the defaults are not really ideal. So the first thing that the defaults are doing is, well, they're taking a bit of the speech out. And another thing you can see is some of these areas are clearly containing some speech and we're not catching any of those. So the defaults are not guaranteed to work. We have to actually set the gate. Now, this is a very common occurrence and it happens because singing and speech are very dynamic. Through our mouths, nose, throat, vocal cords, and diaphragms, we humans are capable of producing a very diverse range of sounds from quiet to very loud, and covering almost the entirety of the frequency spectrum. When we speak, for example, vowels carry a lot of energy, whereas consonants usually don't. Let's take this sentence, for example, all info, no fluff. So as we can see on the waveform, the word all is considerably louder than the word fluff. We open our mouths wide and let out a burst of air when we say all. But by contrast, the way we produce the f consonant is by constricting the opening of our mouth with our teeth and letting out a tiny bit of air like this. As a result, the amount of sound that consonants produce can sometimes be barely louder than the noise floor we are working with. So in order to strip silence out of speech, we need to set a gate threshold in a way that it catches the quietest bits of audio while not catching any of the noise. And that is usually a very thin margin of error. So to make setting this threshold and hysteresis easier since we're doing offline processing, Reaper has these four lines. And this is another design flow with Reaper because these four lines are the same color. So it's really hard to tell which one is hysteresis and which one is threshold. So for now, just to make it easier for you to see, I'm going to untick this box just so that we see one single color. And also I'm gonna just bring the hysteresis up a bit so that you know that we are actually focusing on these two middle lines first. So a good way to set your threshold is, well, go to a really quiet part of your audio. So this bit is pretty quiet. Even within that bit, try to find something that is low in volume. Um, even without listening to this, I know that this is a consonant. This is probably an S. This would be a vowel of sorts. So we want to bring this down until we are sure to be catching all the consonants, the quiet bits of audio. And I think a yeah, minus 40 is a good place. And in my opinion, you set your threshold first and then you get on hysteresis. When we set our threshold, we are telling Reaper any bit of audio quieter than 40 dB, look at that as silence and any bit louder than that, open the gate, let the audio through. Now what hysteresis is, is a relative value at which the gate closes again. So once audio exceeds 40 dB, the gate will be opened, the audio will be kept. But with a hysteresis at a default amount, which is minus six, it wouldn't immediately close the gate when we get to minus 40 dB. It will do it at minus 46 dB. So it's good to have a little bit of leeway to work with. And let's set this, for example, to 10. So that way you may have really quiet bits of audio that actually do go below 40, but because of this 10 dB of hysteresis, they will be caught. So now if we look through our file, we can see that the gray areas are almost completely silence. There is no bit of speech that is being mistaken taken as silence and trimmed out of our audio, which is really good. But we still have another problem. These little bits, little bits, these are part of the same sentence. So we don't want to necessarily cut out these minuscule amounts of natural silence that occurs when somebody speaking pauses and stuff. We don't want to get rid of any of those. So what we can do is come back up here and kind of finesse these minimum slice length and minimum silence length. For example, these really small cuts in silence, we can get rid of them by setting a minimum length for any bit of audio to qualify as silence. So for example, something I can do here is to go, silence needs to be at least half a second long before it qualifies as silence. And that way you can see that the silent bits and the natural pauses between somebody speaking are not making it. These big obvious pauses in speech are making it. And the same way we can also set a minimum slice length, meaning the minimum amount of non-silence audio. Another thing we can see, for example, is that this area seems to be a pause and maybe this little bit and this little bit. Little bit. Maybe they're not like speech audio. Maybe somebody coughed or it's just a little bit of like crew members mumbling in the back or something. So we can also set a minimum slice length. So maybe let's say something needs to be at least 250 milliseconds long before it qualifies as a slice of audio. So that looks about right. And now most of our silence is being cut out. Again, here there are some iffy bits. So we can even increase this amount. Maybe let's make it one second. And now it's a lot more of a continuous thing. So already 
Reaper is making some 17 splits for us. But obviously we spend a bit of time dialing this stuff in. Luckily for all of us using Reaper, there are presets. Click on presets down here. I can go save presets and I can call this speech strip silence. And now I hit okay. And now these settings are saved. So whenever I want to strip silence out of speech, I can at least load this preset up. I have other presets. So I can at least load this preset up and that will get me at least a starting point. So from there, based on, you know, different recording environments and different stuff, you may have to adjust the threshold and hysteresis. You may adjust this stuff a little bit, but more or less all the settings are dialed in. So once we do that, we hit split. And if we're on Ripple editing, Bob's your uncle, all the audio was brought together. Now, if I was editing this podcast, my work is by no means over, right? I still have to maybe come and decide if I want to cut these parts out. You will definitely see that maybe some bits of audio were cut too short. Another thing you can do is just for safety, you can have a trailing pad. So each of these slices, you can say add you know, a tenth of a second of audio to their ends and maybe add 50 milliseconds of audio to the beginnings of these items. And now if I hit split, there's a little bit of leeway there for each of these slices so that hopefully we're not cutting things right on the onset of audio or right at the tail end of things. And from there, I would do my, you know, further editing. Now, this is as good as time as any to remind you that dynamic split will never do a perfect job at stripping silence. And you shouldn't really expect it to. If somebody's paying you to you know edit their podcast they're not paying you to open this menu set some settings up and bob's your uncle they're paying you to actually use your ears and editing skills to give them a really polished result but when set right dynamic split can get you 60 percent of the way there and then it's up to you from there and just to show you one example of the second option split selected and grouped items let's say our podcast is also a video so what i can do is go to my presets choose speech strip silence and this time what i want to do is i want to select these items and i want to group them and then I want to just select the top one for action to perform. I go split selected and grouped items. As we split this audio, it will split the video in the same places. And that way you can make sure that nothing falls out of sync. Just one example of when you would use a split selected and grouped items. So let's look at another example. This time I have this drum loop. Let's listen to it for giggles. I want to take this drum loop, I want to chop it up and put it in a sampler and then play it again. So again, obviously I can do this manually by just tabbing to transient and splitting them. Dynamic split can also automate this task for us. From here on out, we're at the territory where, you know, dynamic split is doing more than what trim silence or strip silence does. You know, some dogs would have different names for these different operations. Reaper just puts them all in one place. So this time we're not interested in the gate functionality of dynamic split. We are interested in its transient detection settings. I'm going to split points and I'm going to go at transients, split selected items, and again, this time we may decide to set new item time base to beats, especially if we're not taking every single hit and splitting them. Maybe I'm chopping this first phrase. Maybe I'm chopping these two and then maybe chopping this entire phrase together. We want that to move with our time so we can set the new item time base to beats. We'll look at this in the next example. And obviously this time we don't want any trailing pad or leading pad because we want these splits to occur exactly on the transient so that when I put them on my sampler, when I hit my key, that's when I hear the sound. So those are the first two. And as you can see this time, the gate is grayed out, which brings us to another thing I don't really like about the design of this menu. If you're working with the transient detector, then you have to open a sub menu, which is not very ideal. Now that we have this menu open, we are seeing two lines here. This time it's only two lines and that's our threshold. So this time we're telling Reaper what to think of as a transient. So in this case, I want to kind of just chop this up on the really big beats. If I want to chop up every single sample, then I would bring my threshold down so it definitely catches these really kind of subtle hits, but I want to just kind of get the main major hits in so I can bring this back up a little bit. And that seems to be working fine enough. And then again, you can see these green lines and that's where Reaper is going to split the items. If you want a little bit more of these or a little bit less of these, you can play with your sensitivity settings. If you were looping, you would use zero crossing so that your loop will be, you know, not causing clicks. But in this case, we want to precisely cut at transients. Once we're happy with our settings, we can close this menu and I can go split selected items. And as you can see now, all of these bits of audio are chopped up. And now once we have these, I can select all of these. I can go to my action list. I can go, for example, this is a great action, export selected items to RS5K instances and select the track, ship lacks. 
And now all of these are different bits of audio and they are put in your sampler, which, you know, deserves its own tutorial, which I have done actually as part of my post-production series. So I'll put a link to that up there if you're interested. And so another cool thing that you can do with this loop is that you can go create chromatic MIDI item from slices and you can have it create this chromatic line. So if you're trying to take this beat and you want to accompany it by some sweetener drum sounds, you can just do that right here. So once again, if I'm happy with these results, I can also save this as a preset, call it music loop choppage or something. And Bob is our uncle for the future. So last example, just to show you the rest of the options that we haven't covered yet. I got this item here and it's a bunch of Kung Fu whooshes. Let's listen to them. So it's a bunch of whooshes and when we're doing any kind of like karate or fight scene in any movie, we want to add some of these whooshes for effect. So it's like So as you heard, between each whoosh, there's a bunch of silence. And this is standard practice for most sound libraries. They would create a bunch of variation on the same sound effect and they put silence in between them. So in this case, since we don't have clear transients on whooshes, we don't want the transient detector. We just want to split the items whenever the gate opens. So this time I got to bring down my minimum slice length considerably. Probably the shortest of these were maybe even only 50 milliseconds long. Our silence length is much shorter as well. Maybe it's only 100 milliseconds or something like that. I'll also cut out where the gate closes and this is a prime example of where hysteresis would be very useful because these sounds have very slow ramp ups and very slow ramp downs and so I can actually set my hysteresis way down so this time maybe our gate will open at minus 30 and an extra 30 dB of hysteresis here's where this option becomes really valuable set snap offset to peak value within first x milliseconds this is very useful for transition sound effects or any kind of sounds with really slow envelopes they don't have like a transient up front, it takes a while for the sound to ramp up to its peak value and then it goes down slowly. So what we want to do with these ones is to put a snap offset on the peak value of this file. And the reason for that is, well, when we are syncing these to the frames where a punch or a kick happened, well, it's not really useful for me to sync the beginning of these items to that punch because then they will be too late, right? We want to sync this spot to exactly where the punch occurs. So it goes whoppa. Whoopa! So this can also put a snap offset on all of these files. And in order to calculate this well, come here, right click on my transport bar, set this to seconds, find one of the longer ones. This one's pretty long. And I'm gonna set a time selection to this. For this very long whoosh, we can see that it takes 0.3 seconds or 360 milliseconds for the sound to ramp up to its peak value. So what I can do this time is I can say set snap offset to peak value within first. 360 milliseconds. Maybe it'll be useful to have a little bit of leading pad and trailing pad on this one as well. Once again, I can save this as a preset, something like SFX, whooshes. And now I have split this big file into all the different variations. And as you can see, Reaper has put this snap offset on the peak value of all of these very nicely. So that later when I'm editing, let's say I have a punch happening on this frame, I have a kick happening on this frame, I can grab this file and when I have snap enabled, you can see things snap to the offset value rather than the beginning of these items, which is very useful. So put one for kick, take like a smaller one, make that be the punch. And now if on this frame is where the punch is occurring, this is a good ramp up to that punch, a good ramp up to that kick. So that's snap offset. So there you have it. Let's stop right here. So through these examples, we covered just about every box and parameter on the dynamic split window. So hopefully now you know what's up and when the time comes for you to use it, you'll know what options to choose. Something we did leave out of this tutorial are the last three options for stretch markers and transient guides. And I will do a tutorial on that in further detail because that's a total different way of using the same window for time correcting musical performances. And that's also where, you know, sensitivity settings and things like that come in handy and you can see more clearly why they're useful. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. That's it for today. If you like the work I do, please subscribe and comment and do all the things that YouTube wants you to do. If you really like the work I do, you can also donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link to that will be in the description. Thanks to all our previous donors. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.